riser goes like that, right? It don't matter. It goes down. Your, your uh, runner's not supposed to be down there. I it's think cooking. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Mm -mm. It'll be fine. <laughs> I know it ain't. a lot easier, Clark. Yeah, it is. You say it got down to 26 last night? Yeah. Is it still warm? It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, if you put your hand on there, you'll feel it. Yep. Surprised Dollar didn't sleep on it last night. Yeah. Hi folks, welcome back. I figured I would try to not do so much talking in here as some of the people watching can't stand videos over 60 seconds long and well, I'm trying to make it shorter. It's gonna be hard. <laughs> I like to explain things so that people can understand what's going on. And if you rush through a video and, and, and skip around, you, you miss things, and then I get comments from people who say, oh, this thing will never be finished. I seem to think that I remember telling you guys in every single one of these videos that the casting's already been finished, that it took four pours and about seven mold attempts because the mold would break or, or, or the pattern wasn't, you know, smooth enough to extract that complicated inside from the sand. The uh, casting is already on its way back to Georgia. It left yesterday. In fact, uh, I've already been back to Windy Hill Foundry for the, uh, the event that Clark called sometimes. And uh, about 20 YouTubers from all different channels uh, from all over the country like Clark enough to show up at his place and uh, this year we remodeled his shop dramatically. Clark will have a video out on that but here's a little snippet of it.
Now you might recognize a few of those people in that video. Uh, I was amazed at how 20 people came together and were so skilled that hardly anybody needed any direction. Uh, they just saw what needed to be done and did it. Anyway, back to this problem. Now this video is showing you starting off at the end of the third pour. We're going to make the mold for the final pour tonight and I'm going to show you some things that went on about how we took care of the problems that we encountered on the first three. Now where I'm stopping this right now you have just saw Clark hitting on this casting with a, uh, a hammer. At the event a lot more was hit on that first casting. <laughs> This is what you do with all of the miscast things. You set it up in the field and you have at it. Now this sucker was taking nine millimeters, 45s. I think it's gonna be just fine for a ship. Anyway, that's what we're doing tonight. I've got a lot of things to show you, and I want to tell you the reason why this casting didn't make the final cut. This is the third casting, and we ended up doing what's called a short pour. Now, from what I understand, they had weighed the old original casting, and it weighed like 54 pounds. When this one was finished and ground off and everything was done, it weighed 63 pounds. So somewhere or another, it gained some weight. I think it was a little bit thicker in the whole, the whole thing. Now you do want to get it about 7% more so that you can machine it all off and account for shrinkage. Uh, anyway, Clark uses the largest crucible there is. It holds 100 pounds of cast iron. So... At 54 pounds, he still had 46 pounds of cast iron to, to pour the riser and, and the, the pouring basin and everything else. We came up short. Now, we did three things for the next pour, and I'll tell you about now that we alleviated that problem. First thing is, when we poured this, and I'm going to show you some video of this right now, and I'll probably talk over it. While we're doing it but the crucible inside the furnace was filled by Clark putting in metal it melts and slag forms on top we well, don't want the slag in your pour so he scrapes it off and he scraped a lot of it off inside the furnace and kept on going and then we picked up that crucible out of the furnace and we jiggled it a little bit. We spilled some, putting it into the carrier, and it wasn't all the way full. And then Clark scraped some more off the top of the slag off the top, thus reducing the total volume that we had of metal to pour into that mold. Well, we thought we had plenty of metal to pour in there because of the weight calculations Clark had done. We didn't. So the first thing we did was we made a pact between ourselves that unless that crucible was completely full when we started pouring, we would stop, put it back in, remelt more metal to bring it up to the brim. We scraped all the slag off in the furnace, got it out. We, we didn't spill a drop this time and poured it. The third thing we did was we put a core into the uh, center where a shaft's going to go, and we'll show making that core too. And that gave us extra metal to complete the pour. I've talked long enough. Let's get on with it. This is the incredibly difficult part to pull. So I'm doing everything I can to make this as smooth as possible. If you run your hand over here, it's rough. Feel that up in here. It's just like, that's probably where it's grabbed. Yeah. 
So I'm sitting here. You would think that with that bacon right on it, it would make it cool. Well, I learned when I was here last time that I didn't know a damn thing about how slick these things were. And need right to be. here, feel right here. That's bad right uh, there. Well, I got a really fine sandpaper, and I'm going to go over it here before we do this again. If you need more, okay. um, the sandpaper is under the, the drills right there. The okay. gorgeous drills. Thank you. We spent three hours making the mold, and to pull this out, tapped on it for an hour and a half. And finally, when it came up, half of the stuff was still in there. So this is really the hardest part of that mold to make. Got to be. When I was over here molding up the rails for the 10 EE project, Clark taught me a lot about how this stuff has to be. And not from a pattern making standpoint so much, but the finish on it has to be incredibly slick. And you need as much draft as you can. Like if you look here, there's just a tiny bit of draft on this surface. There's a little bit more here, but this is almost straight up. Same way here, this one's almost straight up. This has got a little more draft. All that has to let loose of the sand, and you can't just go like this because then you'll tear something this way. So vibration is what he's using to get it out of here. So it's gotta be real slick. So if you make a pattern, Make it slick. Any little ridge. I mean, I thought mine was perfect when I came over here and I ended up working three hours on those rail patterns just to get a little slicker. So that so to come out of the sand. And I had seven degree of draft on it. Now this okay, doesn't matter. Tell people to keep their uh, profile to no more than five tenths on flatness on the profile of the surface of the pattern. Five tenths profile. Yep. So you can't be off five tenths. That's a half a thousandth between a little ridge here and a ridge here. Or, or the sand packs into it as you're ramming it. It wouldn't be so bad if Clark would use his feet, but he uses these rammers to make it even tighter. And that's the problem. How many people want to see Clark barefooted dancing on a pattern? Leave your comment below. <laughs> We're going to run a, a, a contest, Clark. <laughs> We're going to run a contest All right. in a poll. And the prize is getting to watch you do this barefoot. <laughs> we'll, we'll run for charity, see how much money we can raise for charity to see Clark barefooted on a mold, Pakistani style. I don't know if you can hear it, but if I run in my finger over that, it makes hardly any sound. A rub. It doesn't take much sandpaper. You just gotta put the time in. Can I cut the screw off of this casting? Yep. Yeah. Probably just break it up. Where's Thor? Yeah, I ain't 
You'd always use that nice Everlast plasma cutter. Well, it's about, it, it would take me about 10 minutes to get all of it. And I haven't had orientation on it yet. That, 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 that's not really the, the reason I meant. I could be the tin man. <laughs> need an extra hand when it goes to because the thing is heavy. Yeah. But I can control the balance myself. put it on the mold? The uh, after I uh, blow it off. Okay. You gonna need another hand? Yeah, we probably will when I get ready to set this in place. If you'll go over on that side where that pin is, okay. I'm going to set this down on it. Okay. 
Now for one of the most dreaded parts. The most dreaded part. Well, getting those cores has been a here. It's been a challenge too. Yes. See those waves on this side on the, in the dust? What is starting to grow? The, oh, the dust, yeah, the, the the dust, dust. pattern? Mm -hmm. It resonates all that gives you a like really that. nice way to tell that it's doing something. Mm -hmm. Well, the inner circle. Yeah, when you're is, when you're wrapping it, you should see the sands uh, going you, everywhere. You should see the dust just start. Well, the part you're hitting on out here is actually where the core. Yeah. Sections go. Right. The actual part is that little lip right there. Yeah. And then all this other stuff is what makes this pattern so hard is it's really heavy when you add all that extra. Yeah. Okay. Time again. Yeehaw! <laughs> I couldn't hold my breath any longer. <laughs> oh. Sorry, can't help myself. I want to explain as much as I can so I don't have to answer so many questions in the comments. <laughs> Anybody's going to listen. Anyway, on the screen here is a picture of the mold after the pattern was removed on the inside part. And one of the things that people always are talking about is this flask is not big enough for the part we're molded. Well, in this section, this picture, this center section here is the inside of the casting. And it only comes out about three quarters of an inch around the outside of that. All this other ledge right here, this bright part, is where the core molds fit to make a small little relief around the outside of this pattern. So we've got two and a half, three inches of space right there. It's all sand that's uh, silicon sand that's uh, hardened. And then you got all the rest of this over here. So the sand's not the problem. Now, as you can see in this top picture, that's the outer part of this mold that's down here. So this goes on top. And you can see there's eight inches of sand around that casting. So it's not that the flask is too small, it's the pattern's kind of big. Now, I don't know much about pattern making, so I'm not going to make any comments. Uh, I don't know if that was the only way to do it or not. 
we made it work, but it was hard. Now, in this area here, this comes back over and slips over the cores that we're going to make. And the cores lay on this bright ring around the outside. And they form about a three-quarter inch or half inch indentation all the way around the casting. I've lost the dead gum picture of Clark making that casting molding. But in this picture here, this is a pattern that the mold maker made to cast those uh, cores. And of course we're making a center core here for it in this picture. But that little casting right there is what we made. We ran into a problem in that the cores were a little bit too long. All four cores, when you put them on the pattern, were too big. So Clark spent a lot of time sanding down the cores to make them the right size to fit up against the, the pattern correctly. Uh, sorry I didn't get that one for you. Man, I got so much film I don't know where I'm going crazy cross-sided and everything else just trying to find it. Well, on we go. Now I can drop straight down on mine. Yours is the one that has to go in the hole first. Mine looks good so far. Okay. About two inches till we hit the pin. I'm at the pin. I'm in the hole. Okay, I'm in the hole. Touchdown. Yeah. They'll take a chance. Yeah. <laughs> it's been too long. Ah, the heat. we don't have wind. Yeah. It's nice out here. Yeah. It's one big furnace you got there. Yeah. We need to get that thing in use too. It's spitting now, ain't it? I don't know if I want to handle that much iron with you. I don't want to have to. <laughs> Probably should have let that. You know, that graphite floating right to you. I should move. It's popping it out of these pores. Yeah, there isn't nothing to making these cast iron things. You just <laughs> put some sand in a box and ram it up and yep. you're finished. Simple as that. And it's not like you're doing 50 of them where you could get a production line going. Yeah. Uh, one off everything. Yeah. Almost out of alcohol. Looks like we lost most of the graphite, don't it? I don't know. Uh, uh, it's in there pretty good. On to the next part. 
you bring that there you go now it's going to be need to be sitting down yeah i need to get a little more stable Shine your light over here. I want to make sure I got my... Oh, your marks. Here. Yeah. See it over here and there too now. Okay. Right in there. Am I on it over here? No. Right there. Right there I... you are. All right. So now I'm going to push straight down. Is that thing already on the sand down there? Can't see. I must be. Looks like it. All right. Or does it? I don't know. I can't see her in my way again. over there where it's supposed to be. Got a full pour on You're both sides. Full. Staying full. It is sucking in on this riser, but I'm not worried about that. Not at all. You tried to get me to get that wood out. Yeah. You did. <laughs> I know you did. I said, I said, Steve, get that piece of wood out. We worked too hard to make it. Did your son play with fire when he was young? Yeah, everything. Everything? Good gosh. They built fire under the house one time. <laughs> well, he's trying to do better out here. Yeah. I'm very happy with that. Well, I'm glad you are. First time in four days. <laughs> yeah. First time in four weeks. Four weeks. Good God. The one from yesterday looks better, but... We got this one, the one propped up on the floor of the other one, the first one. There's two in there so and this one. we got three casts and a fourth one coming. We could sell them I'm, for I'm scrap iron. One, I'm putting that one on eBay. The first one? Yeah. These don't look any, look worth, you know, but that first one we did looked good except for right there in that box. That was a very, 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 very hard thing to do. So, uh, you still recording? I'm recording. All right, guys. So, if you're not subscribed to my channel, I just wanted to let you know any of those high-end collectors that have to have that one-of-kind piece, it's going to be available for you on uh, eBay probably in a month. Uh, you'll have to follow my channel to, to know more of the details. We'll probably put a, bit, a starting bid of, uh, I don't know, $100 on there and let it go from there. $100? Yeah. Oh, good God. It's that's worth more than the, that. That's going to be the starting bid. Okay. Minimum is going to be, what, $25,000? I don't know. Clark, you have a YouTube channel? Yeah, I do. Where, where could I find that? Uh, uh, on YouTube? To, yeah, on YouTube. Good gosh. Just look up Wendy Hill Foundry. That's your dad, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you claim him? Oh, yeah. He claims you. <laughs> Told him everything you know. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I learned what not to do from my dad. <laughs> I was kidding about that. He's done this on his own. Well. My dad's been a, he's an expert welder. And uh, that's what he did most of my life. Oh, cool. And he's worked for. Maybe you could have welded that up for us and we wouldn't have been here for five <laughs> extra days. I asked him why we couldn't just, you know, fill the top that off with bronze, you know. On the other one. But uh, he didn't. 
Too many people on YouTube are w gonna watch this being machined. I don't need them seeing repairs done. Okay. Well, that happens a lot. And it's not over yet. You know, I can't no. break this out till either late tonight or tomorrow. So I don't want to. I don't want to uh, break it too up. much yet. But, but I feel good about it. Good. We, uh, our riser spilled over on the top, and uh, it was my wife's idea. I want to give her the credit for it. This was not my idea. It was Josie's. And, uh, well, so I don't want her going, but she gets, the, <laughs> she also gets the blame if it doesn't work, right? Oh, yeah, 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 I was yeah. Getting ready to blame that's her that's what you're doing. You're not trying to, so if it's wrong tomorrow, it's her fault, guys, <laughs> or Don's, it's yeah. Don's fault. There you go, Don. <laughs> I gotta get you a it's Don's fault sign yeah. for here. <laughs> His friend Don is uh, one of a kind. You want to see the top? Yeah. Oh. You didn't clean it up. You cleaned it up better for eBay, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm about to run out of battery. So I'm going to say what, bye to you. What time are you going to try to hit the road? Right now. All right. I got to get to well, you soon. I, I can't wait around. Well, if you didn't... If, uh, if you didn't get it a while ago, guys, I really appreciate Steve's help. He stuck it out for four days with us to make sure we get this, get a good mold poured. And how many molds did we have to start before we finish this? I've uh, been while here, you were here. Four while I'm here. We Pull, did. Pulling the inside of that sucker is dang near impossible. And Clark did it three times that I know of. Well, two and a half. One, it broke, right? No, well, while I've been here, we've made three. Okay. Yeah, we made four. This is the fourth one while I've been here. Yeah, and I've snapped that off twice now, so I know yeah. we've made more than five molds. It's very and difficult to mold up like that. Yep. Oh well, I think we got it. See you later. Thanks for your help. Thanks for letting me come. Um, it's an honor, and I'm glad you were able to. An honor. Join us. I gotta yep. show this to a lot of people. Yeah. It's an honor. Yeah, it's an honor. <laughs> Thank you. Can you hear that, Don? Yeah. Don, it's an <laughs> honor. Uh, he's glad I'm over in Mississippi. He probably just got the Border Patrol out for me. I figure he's bored and bored uh, shitless and waiting for you to get back. Oh, no. Don's an old guy. He, he, uh, you're not recording this. Are you? Well, I could. <laughs> Hey Don, 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 don't listen, okay? Don's good, Bye Don, Don. <laughs> we got some talking to do. Hey, Bye hey, guys. Man, well, guess where I am, guys? Welcome back, Steve. I can't stay away. You probably already seen this on Clark's video by now, because I'm holding off to show this till he does. But there's the finished casting of it's all fixed up. Yeah. I, I, I didn't run a, I ran out of time grinding so I didn't get the backside too well but uh, I just got to hit this edge here but it yeah and well that's all that for, down but that's all for the machining part yeah yeah Keith can probably face that off yeah how, how much did it weigh 63 pounds 63 yeah a little bit more than we and there's the, the which attempt was that that was our third attempt over there correct yeah, yeah, this one didn't quite make it. We had quite a bit of shrinkage there. But this one did. Yep. We're going to send this one with uh, Keith. We're going to send them both with Keith, and he's going to use the first one for a setup piece. That'd be a good idea. We don't screw up the second one. And uh, from there, uh, we're going to get this thing put together. Well, I'm proud that you let me even come over and look at it well i'm glad you were able to help yeah. and i'm glad you were able to stick it out for four days <laughs> because it you know a lot of people don't understand why it took so long for me to get these videos out it's because we were organizing our help one day out of the week and uh because these guys have jobs as well so what we would do is we would nail this every saturday and if it failed well we just have to do it the following week 
And after about the third week or fourth week into that, Steve come along and Steve was actually uh, dedicated to, to stick it out with me. I wasn't going to let you just stop. <laughs> so uh, we spent four days making five or six molds uh, during that duration. And so there's probably been a total of seven or eight attempts to get this mold made to do it right, but there's just so much involved. Yeah. And, mo and people that have never done this kind of work are not going to understand. I realize that. Uh, but this is the most challenging thing you'll ever do if you ever tried it. <laughs> yeah. And, and that was six or seven molds, but it's only four pores. Right. So and we get we get uh, we get bashed a lot because uh, this looks so simple, but guys, we're we're set up for smaller castings here, and uh, we we t we try to stay away from this stuff. There's bigger foundries that can handle this, yes, but do you have a ten thousand dollar startup cost to get this done? Do you want to do that, or do you want to let us do it? Yeah, that's the that's where the difference is. We we try to cater to the 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 guys that don't have that kind of cash that do want a good quality casting because we're all about keeping this old historic stuff going, and we don't get rich off of this. But I not only catch a lot of uh, headaches to pull this off, I catch a lot of heck from commenters a lot of times that just don't have a clue what all goes into this. That's why I'm trying to show them what happens. But that right there looks so simple. Yep. And it is, but you know. Well, if if we had used a pattern, if, if we had used a pattern that had removable pieces instead of having to put a core in there, I could have done this by myself without having to drag all these people in to help us pull this off because yeah. we had a core print. We had, to, we had to deal with the mold this big around, and I'm not set up for it. I think it turned out very nice. Get it machined up and let it go sailing. Yep. Hopefully. Think of the places that little piece is going to go. Yeah. Well, hopefully Leo will uh, give, give me a chance to, to take a little ride on it someday. We'll see. Can, if I ever get caught up on everything else, he can get away. I'm dreaming, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can go with me on the Seeker. Yep. We'll, we'll cast something for uh, the Seeker, and you, you can be a crew member on it. <laughs> well, thanks for letting me come along on the journey. Glad to have you. Bye-bye.